This lesson deals with average power for a resistance, inductance, and a capacitance. You can find these notes in the ECE202 ebook in chapter 8, starting on page 54. Suppose that we take a resistance R and put a voltage across it and calculate the power that's dissipated. Let's let our voltage be our default phasor, in other words, V sub A cosine of omega T. As we've shown in ECE201, the power dissipated in the resistance is V squared over R. So we got V sub A squared, and we got the cosine then of omega T squared. If you recall from algebra, there's a trig identity that the cosine squared of AX is equal to 1 half the quantity 1 plus the cosine of 2AX. Then we've got V sub A squared, here's the half, here's the R, and then this will be equal to 1 plus the cosine of twice the frequency, so 2 omega T. Now let's graph that versus time. At t equals 0, the cosine is equal to 1, so I'll get 2 here, canceling the 2, and my value then would be V sub A squared over R, and that's this point right over here at t equals 0. Now the cosine can be also minus 1, and when that occurs, we'll have 1 minus 1, or 0, and that's actually corresponding to this point right over here. Now we've got that as a frequency that's twice what we had before, so we'll do one complete cycle. That would be 1 half the period, which would be 1 over 2F. And the same would happen again. What's interesting to note here is that the results are always positive. So we're always dissipating power. We'll talk some more about the colors that are here on the next page. The average value of any periodic waveform can be found by drawing a line through the waveform where for one period, the area above the line equals the area below the line. You can also use the following formula to calculate the same thing. And that is that the average value is equal to one over t, the integral from zero to t of f of t dt. So let's try that on this particular waveform. So the average power, we we'll use uppercase letter with uppercase subscript is equal to one over period, the integral from zero to the period of our function dt. That's just a scalar here, it's not a function of time, so let's bring that out in front. So I'm left with the integral of one plus the cosine of two omega t dt. Basically I have two integrals here, so I got the integral of the first term, which is just the integral of one dt, which is just equal to t, and evaluated from the upper limit minus the lower limit. Then we have the integral of the cosine of two omega t. If you recall from calculus, that the integral of the cosine of ax is one over a times the sine of ax. Here's one over a, which is one over two omega, and then the sine of 2 omega t, evaluated from the upper limit minus the lower limit. So we'll plug in t and then 0, and then likewise here plug in t, and then the sine of 0 is equal to 0. So then we have t, and I've got 1 over 2 omega, and then I've got the sine of 2 omega t. But what is omega? Omega is 2 pi f, and t is 1 over f. So the f's cancel, and I've got 4 pi, and that's twice 360 degrees, so the sine of that's equal to 0. So then I have the t's canceling, this one with this one, and left with V sub A squared over 2R. If you go back to the previous page, find V sub A squared over 2R, that's this line right over here. You can see here that the area above and the area below, area above, area below, and area above are equal to each other. In other words, I got the same amount that I have here. If you put these two pieces together, you have this. And this is called the average value or Let's next calculate the energy absorbed versus time. If you recall, again from ECE 201, that's the integral of the power x dx evaluated from zero to t. So the running variable here will be t, and we're using a dummy variable in the integration. So again, we've got our v sub a squared over 2r, one plus the cosine of twice omega times x dx. We bring out the constant in front again. So I've got the integral of 1 dx, and I've got the integral of the cosine of 2 omega x dx. The integral of 1 dx is just equal to x evaluated from the upper limit minus the lower limit. The integral of cosine is equal to sine, and then also here dividing by 2 omega. And again, evaluate that at the upper limit minus the lower limit. So I just get the value of t here, and then the 1 over 2 omega times the sine. What I've got here is a term that's increasing linearly with time, and this is increasing and decreasing, but the total is going to keep getting larger and larger. So again, as you dissipate power over time, um, you're going to consume more and more energy. You can draw a graph of this versus time with here's my ramp, and then here's my sinusoid of twice the frequency. Again, this is increasing without bound. You just keep consuming power, and your energy just keeps going up and up and up. Let's next take a look at inductance. Suppose I take a current source and put it across an inductance cell, and let's make the current the our default phasor, which would be I sub A cosine of omega t. If we recall from chapter 6 of ECE 201, the energy absorbed by the inductance is 1 half L I squared. So we're going to square then our I sub A and the cosine of omega t. Recall from our previous discussion, that the cosine squared is 1 plus the cosine of twice the frequency divided by 2, and that would make this a 4. Our power is related to the energy by a derivative, so we could take then the derivative of this, we got a scalar in front, and then I've got 1 here, the derivative of 1 is 0. If you recall from calculus, the derivative of the cosine of ax is equal to minus a times the sine of ax. 
So then we have a minus two omega times the sine, and bring the minus sign out in front. One of the twos cancels with the two here, so I get a two. So I have minus omega L, I sub A squared over two times the sine of two omega T. Now if you graph the power, it's gonna be a sine function flipped over. So we initially start out at zero and then we're gonna to go to our negative peak and then our positive peak and so on. And the peak value will be omega L, I sub A squared over two. For the energy though, we've got the cosine of twice the frequency. And again, this is always positive, so we'll get a graph just like we did in our resistance case where the peak value is gonna be where I have two here, so I become one half L I sub A squared. And again, we got the frequency of twice the value. So we got two of these cosine waves for each value of our period. As you see from this graph here, the average power dissipated in inductance is equal to zero. So whatever absorbs, it gives back again. So we absorb and then we generate, we absorb and we generate. But the energy though is bounded by one half L I sub A squared. So you can't take any more energy out of the inductance than you've put into it. So you store something in there, and you take it back, store some more, take it back, store some more, take it back. Let's take a look at capacitance next. Let's put a voltage source across this capacitance and let that be our default phasor in the time domain. So V sub A cosine omega T. If you recall from chapter six in ECE 201, the energy absorbed by this capacitance is one half CV squared. So we would again take one half times C and then let's square our time domain phasor, which would be V sub A squared cosine squared omega T. Again, the cosine squared is one plus the cosine of twice the frequency, then divided by two, and that's where this two becomes a four. Power absorbed by the capacitance is the derivative of the energy absorbed with respect to time. So we've got the scalar in front, and then the derivative of one with respect to t is just zero. And then the derivative of the cosine of two omega t is then equal to minus two omega times the sine of two omega t. So again, I got a minus sign out in front. A two cancels with one of the twos here, so I've got a two here and an omega c v sub a squared. And if we plot this versus time, we're going to get the graph of a sinusoid. But it's going to be flipped because I got this minus sign in front, and the peak value will be this. So I've got omega c v sub a squared over 2, and then the negative of that. So if you look at this, the average value here is equal to 0. But again, if we plot the energy absorbed, it's got this 1 plus the cosine of twice omega t. So this will go between plus and minus 1, and so this quantity will go between a 2 and 0. So we'll see the peak value here is C times V sub A squared over two, and then going back down to zero. So the average power dissipated in the capacitance is zero. The energy is bounded by C V sub A squared over two. So if you store energy in the capacitance, you can give it back, store it, give it back, and so on. These are some of the properties of average power for resistance, inductance, and capacitance.